Hi there, today on Typical Books, I'd like to talk about Haunted by James Herbert. It is a typical book in that it's about all the things I like. It's about seances and mediums and ghosts and haunted houses, unreliable narrators, unreliable everythings. I really enjoyed this, but first I want to get into a little bit of my editorial decision and my catch up of the Horror in 24 readathon. I am at the beginning of reading Rebecca and I'm enjoying it immensely. And I am tempted to slow right down and take this in. Uh, it's a fairly meaty read. It looks like a typically sized book, but the text in it is very small. So what I want to do is just sort of slow down and take this in. I've taken the dust jacket off because that's what I prefer to do so it's not slipping around. I didn't mind it so much with Haunted. It was a more lightweight book because it's probably older and it's lost a lot of its moisture. I don't think this printing is as old, so it's still very heavy, high clay content book or something like that. So it's very heavy and uh, yeah, I didn't want to damage the uh, slip cover, so I've taken it off. But Rebecca is wonderful and it does satisfy a few of the tips. It is a psychological horror. It is a gothic and it is something that's been on my TBR for a long time. Now you may think, um, Lydia, that's too many books to cram into one and I'm waiting for the readathon where I can get all of the requirements in one book, right? Haha. <laughs> But uh, I don't really mind because I've made another executive decision. As much as I'm enjoying Shadows and Tall Trees 8 from Undertow Press, I have decided for red on the cover, I'm going to read Jack Ketchum's Red. And ooh, I'm very excited. I don't, I believe that there's a novella in here as well. So it's two stories, The Passenger and Red. And um, so it's a little bit shorter. That's fine. It'll be a little lighter and I think it'll be a little more summery. Although I do kind of want to get into, there's one or two readathons going on right now, and there's the different kind of summer horror style readathon that John had done at Books of Blood, and I've seen some of the spooky, um, spooky bees, what people are saying, spooky bitches, um, smart horror readathon or something like that. That's intriguing to me, so I'm, I'm so tempted to do another readathon, but. Yeah, I am also very tempted to read Red for Red on the cover. How can I not, right? So those are my uh, editorial decisions so far. One thing I really enjoyed about reading Haunted was that it ties into Rebecca and it ties into the other Horror in 24 story, The House That Was Not There, that I'm reading uh, as I'm reading this in the Vampires and Werewolves uh, short story collections by Bernard J. Herwood that came out from Scholastic way back in the day. Um, yeah, so I love how these things all tie together and maybe I'll get into that a little more in Horror and 24 wrap up or uh, if I do a separate Rebecca review. So for now, Haunted. Haunted by James Herbert. It's not my first James Herbert and it won't be my last. There's other rats version stories that go along with the rats and uh, like Nest, I believe, and there's a, uh, oh, I can't remember the titles of them, but there's other uh, Ash books as well. David Ash is one of the main characters in this, the main character, the male lead, so to speak, in this. Now, Haunted did garner 111 out of 114 in the book score that's provided by Merce at Harpies in the Trees. Thank you again for that. Always thank you for that. And where it lost points is something that you would go into this book sort of expecting, perhaps, because it's a mediums and psychics in a haunted house uh, without any of the decadence of something like Hell House. It's uh, a little lighter fare than that, a little less extreme, of course. It's a more gentle, uh, maybe a quiet horror. It's sort of somewhere in between there. Uh, but there are some characters that are just too stereotypical. So... I had to give it a little bit of a ding. It couldn't get perfect, right? It just could not get perfect. It is close to perfect. It really is, especially for me. And that's the beauty of the book score is it does take into account and you can tweak it and, and mold it a little bit where, you know, I don't find some subversive, really subversive or extreme or gory writing is a, is a minus. I find that a plus. So you can change that sort of stuff depending on your reading style as to how you would and make this scoring a little more personal than just a plain five stars. So this does get five stars, but it's not a perfect five stars. There's a few things about Haunted that I absolutely 
loved and it wasn't just the characters and the characters interaction the dialogue is so natural and it seems james herbert's very very good at doing that i really enjoyed that they were all very distinct there was different sort of tropes as far as the the family goes there was the surly brother the younger fun loving brother that doesn't take anything seriously uh the sister who is a bit of a uh, a love interest or not a sex pot necessarily, but the prudish horsey set um, an alluring type. There was a crazy sister. There is the, um, who could be a Mrs. Danvers. There is Auntie Tess, the house mistress, so to speak, that is their aunt. And all those characters intertwined. On one hand, I don't want to dock them too much for being stereotypical because that is what they do in this story. But a few of the things they did and said were just a little too... Uh, paint by numbers where they could have been given a little a little extra edge now I think that in reading Rebecca a lot of what the main character there is seeing in um, Mr. De Winter is what they sh she would have found a lot more of it in David Ash he is a wonderful skeptical medium and I love this so I'm very interested in seeing more of this particular character and how he evolves we have some insight into him having horrible event happened in his childhood that coupled with his uh, budding telemetry or his I don't know if it's necessarily telemetric or if he's just a medium or if he's a mind reading psychic I'm not really exactly sure where he fits in because he seems to fit into a few things there because he does have what I think is uh, telemetry by touching objects being able to see some of the past and the psyches of other people that have touched them he seems to exhibit some of that and straight up mind reading he uh, does profess to have but he really keeps it all in a tight little box because he is a skeptic he is one of my favorite ghost hunters the type who wants to disprove things with science so it was really up my alley the story begins outside of a little town called Ravenmore on the way to Edbrook which is this mansion owned by the Webb family and just those terms alone Ravenmore the Webb family I was in love with this let alone someone named David Ash which was so close to Daniel Ash and I couldn't help but have Bajas kind of vibes from this and they definitely panned out because he is a little bit of a moody man and I really liked watching his journey and learning about the history of this mansion, the history of the Webb family, the history of Ash, and the Psychometric Institute that he works for. It's an institute of psychical studies, if I recall. And I remember being a kid and my grandmother receiving a letter contacted by some sort of similar psychical institute um, from the UK that we're contacting a lot of like wise women in the area and psychics and things like that to see if they would be game to be tested with whatever sort of research that they were doing on mediumship and psychometry and things like that. So I was very intrigued with this institute and it's not quite, you know, Talamasca levels of secret society. They are more like a, a skeptical institute and I, I enjoy the uh, reality of institutes like that, like MUFON. So suffice it to say, if you enjoy stories of haunted houses, ghosts, and strange family occurrences, people that have budding psychic gifts that are keeping it under wraps, or other people that show off those talents and can call out other mediums, if you enjoyed watching that John Edwards show on TV way back in the day, then definitely pick up something like this. I am interested in reading the rest of the stories, although I do have a few other books on my toppling TBR pile, that's for sure. So someday I will definitely dig into some of the David Ash series from James Herbert because I really enjoy his writing style. It's very digestible. It was a very quick read and just a beautiful read because it's edited wonderfully and it's, the language is wonderful. The dialogue is natural. The settings are uh, bleak but comfortable. I don't know how else to describe it except it's just exactly where I want to be. David Ash, a psychic investigator, is invited to Edbrook, a remote country house where an alleged haunting is taking place. There he meets the Merrill family, two brothers, Robert and Simon, and their younger sister, Christina, and their aunt, Nanny Tess. 
Ash is renowned for his dismissal of all things supernatural, having exposed many fake mediums in the past, as well as invariably finding natural causes for so-called psychic phenomena. He has a deep psychological reason for refuting such unearthly occurrences. But at Edbrook, there is a mystery which cannot easily be explained. Over three hideous nights of terror, David Ash is forced not only to reevaluate his beliefs, but also to confront the enigma of his own past. There are games to be played at this place, nightmarish pastimes of a deadly and maleficent nature, and only when they are done will Edbrook's dreadful secret be disclosed. So thank you very much for checking out another episode of Typical Books. Coming up next, I want to do, of course, a wrap up on Horror in 24, but before then, I'm likely going to do a little bit of a talk of some of the novellas that I've read lately. And those have been sort of a stopgap between a lot of the books I've been reading. I'll pick up either a short story or a novella right now. And the lengths of them, about 8,000, 9,000 words, are really digestible. But it's hard for me to reconcile doing a, a review. And maybe I'll get better at just doing a review of a short story or novella, but for now I'm going to kind of lump them together into one and do a couple of these pieces. So let me know what you've been reading. If there's anything here that you've read before out of Rebecca, Haunted, or The House That Wasn't There, that old short story or old English folk tales that are very similar, then definitely let me know in the comments below or just what you're reading right now. Thank you ever so much for watching and subscribing and make sure that you have an ooky spooky day.